Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 148 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish was requested by a YouTube person. Um, so just so you know, I do do these. And this one was too cool to pass up and quite frankly, surprised I haven't done it yet anyway. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is... Bam! The scrawled cowfish. Let's go to a better picture. The scrawled cowfish, or scientific name Acanthostracheon quadraconus. Again, that's Acanthostracheon quadraconus. It is part of the family Ostracheidae, which is a family of very squared off fish. Uh, cowfish, boxfish. You've seen pictures of these before if you've pretty much watched any documentary or even been to really any public aquarium. Um, scrawled, scrawled cowfish is probably one of the more common ones that you might see um, in the aquariums, but you know, it's still a really, really neat. Um, fun fact, for those of you who don't know, cowfish are actually very closely related to puffer fish. That's why it kind of has that same generalistic body shape and thin um thin characteristics so you can see these here it's it's just a little awkward here's a little kind of front on view of it it's got that kind of weird puffer fish sort of vibe to it um, in terms of where you're gonna find this fish it is native to the western atlantic and the gulf of mexico the, i think the tropical and equatorial regions um especially if you're in the gulf um so it go, does go down, I believe, down to like um, Brazil, things like that. Um, I also wanted to make a special note. There has been, I believe, one documented case of where it was found off the western coast of Africa. So it could have been swept out. There could be a resident population there. I'm a little unclear as to why that fish was so far away. Could even be an aquarium release. I'm a little unsure, but um, it is a shallow water fish, um, 1.8 to 24.4 meters, which is about 6 to 80 feet. Um, 80 feet sounds excessively deep, but when you think about the ocean fish and the fish that we've talked about before, and even I was under this impression, when I think shallow water fish, I'm thinking of like the top water fresh, um, the top water freshwater fish, you know, like your hatchet fish, your elephant nose fish, things like this, or celibus half beak, sorry, not the elephant nose. Um, that's what I think of. That's what I specialize in, is freshwater. So it's a little funky for me to think that 80 feet deep, no, oh, that's shallow water. But when you think of like some of the fish we talked about, oh yeah, it's found 800 meters deep. Wow, that is very, very shallow. Um, but you are going to find these usually in grass beds. So pretty much if you can think of find a depth of where seagrass is growing, that's where you're going to find this fish. Um, it is a small fish, probably around 20 to 38 centimeters, which is about 8 to 15 inches. And it has a max length of 46 centimeters, which is 18 inches. So that's kind of big, a lot bigger than I thought. I thought most of these were definitely um less than 30 centimeters which is just under a foot <clears throat> and that does kind of seem to be the average but it's hard for me to imagine an 18 inch cowfish um but again that's my own biases against the fish now how do you know it's a cowfish well it's because of these horns up here um and as someone who grew up on a farm and ranch, honestly, that's a pretty good representation of what these horns, what the horns of a cow actually kind of look like. Um, I definitely get a cow vibe off this. So yeah, aptly named group. I love it, uh, cowfish. But these two spines right in front of the eye, that's what, how you know it's a cowfish. Pretty good giveaway actually. Um, it does 
like the puff we talked about puffer fish before and how they don't really have scales they almost have armor they are an armored fish these um plates on the side almost it's a it's almost got like two skeletons a skeleton on the outside and a skeleton on the inside and the skeleton on the outside is with these um kind of hexagonal i don't know if they're called placoderms or dermal plates but they are kind of hexagonal it's a little difficult to see in this picture even in this one but if you look at this one you can see right here if you look closely um they're in these hexagonal shapes and you can really see it and if you go look at other pictures some of them even have they're much more prevalent um you can kind of see it here but this one can't see it as well anyway but those hexagonal plates plus the fact that it's got this outside um skeleton gives this a sort of angular body shape um kind of blocky and things like that i did find that someone refers to it like frisbee like appearance i don't see a frisbee at all um but a lot of people say oh it looks like a frisbee not to me nope. not to me but it does have this very very small mouth that that's pretty there um it usually has this yellow to blue green modeled um base color but then it has this kind of scrawling pattern this one really doesn't have a squat scrawling pattern it just kind of has like spots here and there which you kind of see on this one um you can really see it on this one this scrawling pattern let's move around which might be because it's called the scrawled cowfish so again very aptly lame name but it does have these blue lines all over and um or blue ish lines if they're there but how do you know it's a scrawled cowfish compared to like the other ones apparently one of the most common ones that you confuse this with is the honeycomb catfish this might be a juvenile or it might be a different species i don't know this one is pulled from a uh website that's like the official i believe it's north carolina fishes so i assume that it's correct but i'm the distinctive characteristics that are apparently there either this is a juvenile or north carolina fish are just weird um but apparently the distinctive characteristics is it has this blue line from the snout the anal fin you can see it here you can see it here real well um, it has three to four lines on the cheek again I don't see it here I hope it's the right one if it's not I apologize um, but you can see the lines here as well but something that you can see here is these two spines and this is why i kept this picture even though it doesn't have those lines that i've talked about the reason why i kept it it's the best example that i found that you could see where the two spines in front of the anal fin are um really really good picture for that um something else you may note if you are paying attention it doesn't have pelvic fins um or a spiny dorsal fin that's pretty uncommon honestly in the uh, fish world so it is um a really good characteristic ah, sorry gotta get that gotta get that coffee in there <clears throat> um but it is in terms of what it eats it's gonna eat very very small invertebrates small crabs sm um anemones and sponges their teeth they don't have teeth like a puffer fish where they have the um very large teeth that are made for piercing not piercing sorry clipping basically would be how i kind of call it um remember the puffer fish were tetradontiformes um or tetradontidae sorry which actually means four teeth um these are remember astra ostracheidae which is in the very large order tetradontiformes but apparently these fish have around a little less than 15 teeth and they're almost like conical or conic con little cones sorry i can't talk today it's been a long day for the or long night for the ping 
uh, baby ping was like eh, good night <laughs> sorry um anyway but so they're eating like these small crabs small anemones things like this um this is such a good picture we're just gonna zoom in on this picture because it's nice a very good picture um beautiful um they are eaten they are harvested as a food fish and i want to say harvested kind of in quotations in the caribbean region they're not, they're not like excessively sought after as a fish but in the caribbean region if they are come across as a fisherman they will catch them and eat them apparently they're delicious if cooked right they have been linked to um a couple of different poisonings because of just uh, improper cooking methods things like this you've heard about like we've talked about the fugu puffer fish where if you don't cook it right it is poisonous this is a very similar sort of deal um but in the rest of the world they're really prized as an aquarium fish um and you can look at this coloration and see why they're absolutely gorgeous i don't think they do very well in home aquariums with inexperienced aquarium aquarius aquarius um but they they are found and you can find them pretty easily i've seen them or what i thought was a scrawled cowfish i've seen them anywhere from like 20 bucks to a couple hundred bucks so i don't really have a good like oh it costs x because it was such a wide range um but it's really odd and this is sort of the interesting fact on the video semi is these fish can't really swim we've talked about puffer fish and how they swim and this is no exception they just don't really swim they actually swim and they have a form of swimming called a strachiaform swimming um actually named after this family very odd way so if you look closely the door the caudal fin um doesn't really move with that skeleton right there there doesn't have any real movement so how they swim is using their dorsal fin and anal fin kind of moving those and then their pelvic fins and they swim in sort of like i found i didn't see it but apparently they swim in some sort of like rowing motion um bizarre way of swimming and they're not they're quick quicker than you might think but they're definitely not that good this is not like the mako shark that we talked about that's just meow. no this is a fish that's like getting where it's gonna go and it may dart for quick distances but it, it is not going anywhere fast so the interesting fact is how these things kind of protect themselves well the number one way they do it is by camouflage um you wouldn't really think that but you think about all the reef fishes and remember these are found in the um in the uh seagrass beds which you know it's like the tiger stripes you wouldn't think that tigers are really good at camouflage when you see them outside of grass and leaves and things like this but they're actually excessively good at camouflage because not only do they have this kind of scrawling pattern that looks very similar to what the rippling effect of sun over waves mixed into the seagrass really really good camouflage actually add that to the fact that they can change their color um to a kind of darker base a paler base or almost completely change it altogether to help them camouflage with their surroundings and that may be why this one is the color that it is it might be in a little darker sort of um, area so that may be why it's so dark and how it's um sort of there so it's why it's darker and so that's why it's kind of going through there but let's say that fails the camouflage fails well i did find somewhere that they dart into like sand they can bury itself in the sand i don't know how but they can um but you also have to remember that they are they are a tank they do have this bony sort of exoskeleton around there which makes them kind of difficult to eat as well but the number one way that they sort of defend themselves 
they actually secrete a toxin. But I wanted to be very clear. I couldn't really find too much evidence that the scrawled cowfish secretes toxin, but there's actually quite a bit of evidence that the family does in some way. But I could not get it exactly saying the scrawled cowfish secretes X. So I'm kind of talking about cowfish in general. Um, they are known to secrete a toxin called pahutoxin, which is a water soluble crystalline chemical toxin. And it's actually contained in the mucus secreted in the skin. Now, I'm totally not going to read my notes for the, this next sentence. I absolutely know this is off the top of my head. Ignore the fact that my eyes go over here. Um, pahutoxin is a choline chloride ester of three Aussie. 3. Acetoxic palmitic acid that is released into the fish. I definitely knew that. I don't know what it means. I mean, I don't know what a choline chloride ester is. Um, yeah. I do know that it's dissolved into the environment and it impacts really any fish in the surrounding areas. Um, it'll cause them to go into like some sort of taxis. Um, paralyzing their gills, things like this. Um, that's apparently how it works. So, yeah, this has been linked to some aquarium deaths, actually. The cowfish, not necessarily skull cowfish, but cowfish get stressed. They secrete that toxin and essentially just kill the fish, especially if it's in a small tank. So, be aware, if you do have these in an aquarium, get them pretty happy. Um, but I do want to make a special note that the toxin actually very chemically very much resembles uh, some laundry detergent or some sort of detergents. And they represent them very, very closely. And there's a bunch of research going in that those detergents, if they are in the seawater as a pollutant, can actually harm fish in a extreme negative way um, apparently the toxin is like chemically and ionically extremely extremely closely um in res close in resemblance to some detergents i couldn't figure out which detergents i tried um i don't know if it's like some weird brand if it's the common ones i don't know but it's there's a lot of research going in that the detergents actually um, interfere with a bunch of life processes of marine life. So, yeah, really interesting. Other than that, I really couldn't find too much in terms of, I mean, this fish is an interesting fish. All cowfish are interesting, but you know me, I try and find an interesting fact about the fish itself, and it's kind of, it's just, it was a little difficult with it. But still hope you enjoyed. And regardless, t thank you so much, guys, so much again. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If you'd like to support the channel, please click the like down below. It is by no means um, necessary, but it would be appreciated. Um, hope you guys are enjoying these. I know I am. So close to that 150. Almost uh, done preparing that video. But regardless, take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and peace.